for somebody that has cancer, they want to use exercise as a modality to enhance whatever protocol they're going through. What type of exercise is best? How often? Because again, it's always a dose thing too. You don't want to over-exercise. And then what impact are we looking for on the physiology by doing that? Yeah. uh, Well, I think to answer that, anything that a patient is willing to do, and it depends on the patient, just simply getting out and walking. If you could walk, you know, and you do a couple miles every day, morning and night after meals is a good thing to improve your GKI. And then if walking's easy for you, you might try rucking or you might try jogging. Uh, With resistance training, I love body weight exercises. You don't have to go to a gym. Uh, You know, lifting weights, uh, the big major exercises like deadlifts and squats and like bench presses are great. Like the staple exercises are great. I like to do them and get a lot of bang for your buck. But uh, push-ups, chin-ups, dips, Pilates, <laughs> yoga, uh, yard work, anything, you know, do just get your body moving. Uh, I'm a big fan. I think one of the biggest life hacks that you could do is getting a pet. A pet will, our dogs make ensure that I do a morning walk and I do an evening walk, you know, after their meals. I mean, it's just like they keep you on schedule. Apparently they help your microbiome, you know, <laughs> just by, you know, just, uh, uh, the things that they bring in from the outside. And I think most importantly, from our perspective is that they provide psychological help, you know, uh, they're just like a stress relief. So exercise has tremendous metabolic benefits, preserving muscle, but they, uh, exercise is also an important tool for psychiatric, uh, help. Too. And I think I could probably speak as a graduate student that was stressed out all the grad. So I self medicated, you know, by lifting weights and, and working out. I didn't take it to much extreme, but if I didn't do it, I felt like I was having withdrawal symptoms from like a drug that was anti anxiety drug or something like that. So it was a very good stabilizing. And I think the diagnosis and then the whole treatment paradigm of cancer is incredibly anxiogenic, (laughs) anxiety provoking. And exercise is an extremely effective way to mitigate a lot of the, uh, it gives you a sense of control. You feel better, you release endorphins. And most importantly, we know that it's improving outcome. And I think it needs to be talked about more. And I should probably be talking about exercise more and we should probably be researching it more. It's just hard to research it in our, in our model systems, but um, a very important component. You talked about the anxiety there, and I can only imagine the anxiety that somebody experiences when they're diagnosed with cancer and and has to navigate, you know, all the different information out there and and to continue, you know, possibly working and keeping the family moving forward. And there's just so many aspects, and this just adds a whole big dimension to ruffle things up. So what I'm getting at with all this, somebody that's tuned into this point. I think what would be helpful is to have some sort of coach or clinic they could go to that follows what we're talking about today or even a book or other resources yeah. because yeah. I, I, there's a lot in there because I know there's different aspects, having a clinic versus a book to do more research. So let's break that apart in two. Are there clinics out there that people can go to for metabolic therapy? And then two, what other, you mentioned, uh, I forget his name, tripping over the truth earlier, but other resources people can dig into to learn more about this. Yeah, Travis Christofferson, uh, a good friend and, and author of Tripping Over the Truth has Care Oncology. So people can just Google Care Oncology. And uh, and I think one of your former guests, Maggie, was uh knows travis and i think might be working with care oncology Uh, so i have compiled a lot of resources on ketonutrition.org so maybe you know just include that in the show notes if you have them uh including dietitians who have decades of experience working with patients miriam kalamian is one of them has a great book ketogenic diet for cancer uh denise potter she works very closely with beck Beth Zupatkania, 
uh, who's worked with in the field of epilepsy for like three or more decades. You know, I mean, these are, these are people who know the science and the art of ketogenic diet implementation. Of course, their bandwidth is kind of limited, but they are creating online educational platforms that could be a resource for patients, but more importantly, they're training practitioners to be able to take this and then guide patients. Uh, but I've compiled a lot of this on ketonutrition.org. You click on the resource section of that. Uh, we do, okay. And when it comes to like oncologists, we need a field of like, I guess you'd call it metabolic oncology, right? Where doctors are open to, I don't like to use the term alternative, but to integrative approaches to integrating metabolic based therapies. And that could be, of course, nutrition, supplementation, uh, exercise, and cancer specific metabolic drugs. And there's a whole toolbox of like at least two dozen of them. You know, I'm working on a document now. It's like, and and that could include, you know, plant based compounds too, but like, you know, pharmaceutical drugs can be repurposed. Uh, so we need that field to advance. And maybe, you know, the federal government is funding of a small amount of clinical trials. But I think what we need is uh, an entrepreneur or a philanthropist that can kind of step up and fund some of the RCTs that are needed to understand the dosage and the timing associated with these protocols. And, you know, just understanding the diet. Uh, to, and then every patient is different. And then uh, I do feel very strongly that different cancers are going to respond differently. And uh, we put all our, we put the majority of our focus on, uh, we studied some breast cancer models, and, but we put the majority of our cancer uh, focus on glioblastoma, brain tumor, and metastatic cancer. Because in those two scenarios, the standard of care doesn't really do anything. So it's like, why don't you start with the most aggressive forms of cancer and then whatever protocols we develop if it works for these cancers then it's probably going to work for other cancers that have similar metabolic phenotype which is the warburg phenotype you know uh, highly glycolytic highly metastatic invasive tend to be more responsive to these therapies all right dom we're going to link up the resource you mentioned there we're going to link up your website your social media and I just want to thank you for doing the work you do, coming on the show and sharing this this information. This is going to be such a great resource for people to dig in and start to learn about this, quote unquote, like you say, alternative approach to cancer. And I just want to thank you again. Yeah, I'd like to say integrative approach <laughs> to cancer. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, when you approach the doctor and the oncologist, uh, uh, you know, ideally with an open mind to these things, to nutrition in general, uh, you want to not really mention alternative therapy, mention an integrative approach, uh, because in many cases, I feel very strongly that these approaches will synergize with what is being offered in the oncology clinics. And if it's the case of, you know, metastatic cancer or glioblastoma, ask the doctor to give you evidence that survival outcomes will be improved with whatever therapy is being offered to you. I think that's that's important. And if the evidence is not there, then you may want to, you know, question the use of, of certain chemotherapy radiation protocols because I've observed that it could decrease the, the life expectancy and even the quality of life patients. So just something to think about. But I'm not against it. I'm just uh I'm just of the opinion that you need to question the doctor when it comes to standard of care, but we're all about, I mean, I'm in this to create a, a therapy that can be used uh, with standard of care therapies. All right, Doc. So I just wanna make that clear, <laughs> that it's not an alternative to the standard of care, but something that can work with the standard of care. I think it's a very important message. If you enjoyed that clip, you're gonna wanna head over here and catch a full episode. I'll see you over there. These are really important things that an oncologist is never going to tell the patient to do. Hyperglycemia and hyperinsulinemia is associated with much greater, sometimes...